All right, I think we are live. So we will give people a few minutes to jump on board with us. Live on this Thursday, July the 9th. Excited about the word for tonight. Excited, excited, always excited when we get the opportunity to come together and break bread, talk about the word of the Lord. Um, I'm always invigorated, inspired, just, you know, just kind of on a high. <laughs> you know, anytime, you know, you, you have time to dialogue and digest the word and talk about it and chew on it and meditate, you know, it just does wonders um, for the soul. And so, let us know if you have joined us this evening. I know we have a couple of people that normally join us. It normally takes a few minutes for people to kind of jump on. So that's why if you can't tell that I'm stalling, <laughs> give people an opportunity to get your get your dinner down and morning, yes. uh, get the kids settled. <laughs> but what we'll what, what we will do, and I will um ask you, Erica, if you can just open us up with prayer while we are waiting for others to join us. We'll go ahead and at least um, go ahead and at least have prayer. Absolutely. Father, we just bless your name and we give you glory tonight, God. We thank you, Lord, for this opportunity and every opportunity, as Veronica said, to, to come together and to reason with you, to dive deep into your word, to hear what your Holy Spirit is speaking and saying to us in this moment, in this time, Father. So we just yield ourselves to you tonight, God, and we thank you, Lord, for this uh, time that we will discuss Sonship. We thank you, Father, for the inheritance that we have in you, Lord, that was afforded to us by Christ Jesus. And Father, we just pray that our ears and our eyes would be open to be able to receive everything that you have for us, oh God. Transform our lives. Give us something, even a new God, even as we are conversating and Father, uh, attuning our ears, Lord, to hear from you, God, and applying our hearts to understanding, God. Give us something anew and afresh, Lord, so that we can walk out this purpose that you have ordained before us, for us, before the foundation of the world. God, we give you glory. We bless each and every person that is going to hear this broadcast. Father, we declare um, that they will receive the word, that it will fall on good ground, and it will produce a great harvest, and your kingdom shall be glorified. We ask this in your precious and holy son named Jesus. Amen. 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 And so last week we talked about, um, so if you have the book, um, chapter, we started in chapter five that deals with sonship, your kingdom inheritance. And uh, Erica, you said something very key when you said attune our ears. Yeah. You know, I thought about like immediately when you said that, you know, it's interesting how when there is something that you're listening for, how you, how we're able to drown out everything else and fix yeah. our ears on listening for that which we are trying to hear. And so that's an intentionality that we have and should always have, especially in those prayer times. Like we should never enter prayer time without tuning our ears to heaven. Like, I, like every time I go into prayer, I am looking for God to speak. Yeah. I am expecting God to speak. And I'm disappointed if I, if I walk right. away. From it. Right. I'm right. like, something, anything, Chrome, we'll take it. <laughs> so that is so key to tune your ears so that we can hear. So just like we have physical hearing, we have spiritual hearing. Okay. That's so important that we make sure that we practice hearing. Like there is nothing, you know how you, of course, you know, we play guitar. So you can play guitar enough 
to the point where you can almost tune it without a tuner. Like yeah. you know what that E string is supposed to sound like. Why? Because you've played it so much that you know the high pitch, you know, that B, you know, that G, you know, it's like your ears have become tuned or in tune with where the frequency and the sound of that note. So even in our prayer time, we are listening and tuning in to hear what the spirit is saying. Even when I'm reading, especially when I'm reading my word, I'm, I'm listening for God to speak as I'm reading. God will interrupt us right in the middle of what, uh, in, in the middle of prayer, in the middle of reading, in the middle of communion, He'll, you know, and so, but that comes with practice. Yeah. And so, uh, and I'll talk about that a little bit tonight, but that's part of our inheritance mm -hmm. is being able to hear spiritually, uh, being able to see and do, Jesus said, you know, I only do what I see my father doing. I say what I hear my father saying. And so that's important to understand as an inheritor of the kingdom of God, as the son of God, that that belongs to us. You know, being able to hear the voice of God. God doesn't want us confused. He doesn't want us trying to figure out, oh my God, was it God, was it not? You know, the only way that you can, can reconcile that is through practice. Every time you sit down, every time you pray, every time you worship, yeah. You should be expecting to hear, discern something from God. Yeah. And so even in our worship service, even in our nights of worship, God, oh my God, when we tap into those places, boy, does this Holy Spirit really yeah. speak. And yeah. so we've seen healing take place. We've yeah. just seen so many wonderful things take place because we have practiced right. hearing, discerning, and experiencing expecting right. to hear from God. Amen. Amen. So Amen. chapter chapter five, sonship. I want to start with, and I know we got past this page, but page 86, it talks about Jesus said in John 10, 10, he said, the thief comes for no other reason. And I want you to write those three reasons down. So I hope you have your pen and your pad. The thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Kill, steal, destroy, right? But Jesus said, but I, but, but rather I have come that you might have life. Not only that you have life, but you have it in abundance. And the word there for life is Zoe, Z-O-E, which means the God kind of life. So what does that mean? to have the God kind of life. Does that mean to have a whole lot of stuff? <laughs> Is that the God kind of life? Because sometimes our me the messages that get preached are messages about stuff. You know, you're like, you're, you're not rich in God based solely on the things you possess, <laughs> right? We know that God will bless us with things and give us things. I'm not negating that at all. But that does not determine wealth in the kingdom of God. And so the Zoe kind of life, the God kind of life is our inheritance as a son. The God kind of life. So what does that mean <laughs> to have the God kind, <clears throat> excuse me, the God kind of life? Because that was Jesus's purpose um, for coming. And so what the Lord really wanted me or wants us to delve into tonight is how do we live in this Zoe kind of life, right? Which is our inheritance. And so last week I gave you all the breakdown. You can go to, um, you can go back on my timeline and watch the videos. You can go to my website. I have uploaded the videos to my website. I've also uploaded them to YouTube. So there's three different places that you can, you know, just really go back and, and get that teaching on sonship. Because let me tell you, it's going to be so important in the days ahead that we know who we are in Jesus Christ, because it's going to be challenged. Your faith is going to be challenged. 
But Jesus said, you know, don't worry about it. Be of good cheer. Why? Because he has overcome the world. Thank you, Jesus, yes. that he has overcome the world. But let's deal with this part of us. You know, we're, man is a tripartite being. Three. We are flesh. We are soul. We are spirit. But first and foremost, we are spirit, then soul, then flesh. Spirit man makes us God conscious. Soulish man makes us self conscious. Yeah. And then the flesh part or the body part of us makes us world conscious. Okay. So world conscious means that, you know, I can feel heat. Mm -hmm. I can see colors and all of those things. I, I can smell all the various smells. My flesh is what makes me or my body makes me world conscious. My soul is the seat of my mind, my will and my emotions. So I need you to write that down because I'm going to tell you that the majority of people live in the soulish realm. Mm -hmm. It is the mind, the mind, the will, and the emotions make up the soul of man. And so then we have that spirit part of us that is very God conscious, that mm -hmm. is spiritual, that is e eternal that is our connection yes. to heaven to god all right um that's the part of us that even holy spirit comes and dwells within mm -hmm. so we came from a fallen nature because adam and eve believed that they could be like god yes. okay like the enemy <laughs> he wanted to dethrone god Adam and Eve, did God say you shouldn't eat? Well, he knows that the minute you eat, you're going to be like God. So the desire to be like God is what caused this, this whole fallen nature. So we're born into sin, shaped in iniquity. We, we, we understand all of that. But then the spirit man is quickened when we, um, when we truly take the soul, the mind, the will, the emotions, Yes. We take them to the cross yes. and we yield them to the king to lead our lives and enter his kingdom. Right. So there has to be a taking of the soul, the mind, the will and emotions to the cross right. and dying to this old sinful nature. Right. Mind, will and emotions. Right. So as far as in Adam and Eve, even so in Christ, we are made alive. So when we give our lives to Jesus, we confess with our mouths. We believe in our hearts. Then spirit man is awakened mm -hmm. and takes the seat of dominion. That's right. Right. F uh, f uh, soulish man then comes up under the rule of spirit man. This is how it's supposed to be. <laughs> That's right. Spirit man now dominates. Soulish man comes up under the domination and then flesh man falls up under the soul. Mm -hmm. So now the spirit man, which desires spiritual things, is now leading the way right. for the believer. But what happens is sometimes we don't we don't bring soulish man under, under the dominion on now. of spirit man. Yes. Right. And so now that's when we start to have problems yes. because the two are at war right. with each other. Paul said, when I would do good, <laughs> you know, when I want to do, do when I want to do good, I don't do it. You know, and that's because of that war within our nature that takes place. Um, when we don't take the soul, the mind, mm -hmm. the will, the emotions to the foot of the cross. Right. And so that becoming made alive, mm. made alive, yes. quickened. Yes. The Sp Holy Spirit coming and living within us and quickening this body. Now that there's a consciousness of God. Right. You know, there is a desire 
and a passion for spiritual things, for godly things. It's like, I, I want to do the will of God. Like, it's, it's not a burden to me. It's, I, you know, it's not ancient to me. I'm not looking at, oh my God, and, and you know, to be a Christian, I can't have fun. Like, yeah. none of that. Right. Like, yeah. it's a joy <laughs> to be in the kingdom. Absolutely. And so there's this freedom that comes with it. There's this joy. There's this peace. And the enemy knows, you know, it's like, he's like, uh oh, you know. Um, so what will happen sometimes is he'll wait us out. Yes. And kind of let the joy subside a little bit. You know, okay, well, I'm gonna let her be all happy and I'm gonna let all that go on. And so I'm gonna give her a little bit of time and so I'm gonna let it come on, I'm gonna let her come on down. So then I'm gonna start throwing things at her. I'm gonna start throwing things at her flesh. Right, right. I'm gonna start throwing things at her mind. That's right. That's I'm gonna start right. throwing things, I'm gonna get her emotions out of whack so right. that so that I can get her out of sync with God, right? right? And so there's that war that now starts to happen because it's like, you know what you're supposed to do, uh -huh. but you're fighting that because, because you, 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 you allow flesh man to resurrect himself. Right. Right. Because right. this is a daily thing that has to happen. Even the mature believers, every day we got to bring this flesh under subjection. Right. You know, the Bible talks about there's temptation. It, you know, there are mm -hmm. temptations on every side. Temptation is not the sin, it's the yielding to it. That's right. That's you know? right. Um, so I'm gonna stop right there and let you interject because you know how I can how yes. I can help. Well, <laughs> I, I'm 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 right there with you, and this is it's so good. One of the things that you you said that um that I just want to make sure that I get across, we get across to everybody is that our emotions are real. That soulish realm is real. So we have either the flesh that we are going to agree with and allow our flesh to rule, or we're going to submit those thoughts, those feelings, those emotions, those things that we deal with, which are real mm -hmm. and submit them to God and ask him, why am I feeling this way? What's going on? What do you want to do in the midst of this? Because one other thing that you said that was so key, you know, that when you are connected with the spirit, that brings life. And that's how it is when you take that emotion, that very thing that you know you're experiencing and you take it to God and you, you ask him, Lord, you know, what is this? He births life in you. Mm -hmm. He brings light to it. He brings it in a completely different perspective that gives you strength. Mm -hmm. But if you turn on the other side and you go in that place of the flesh and you allow your flesh to rule, then, then you become condemned and it causes death. Not only in your mind, just your feelings, you start feeling worse. You, your, your mental capacity just goes downhill. Your morale, just everything. And it starts affecting your body. Absolutely. You know, because our spirit man is ever increasing. It is going, and our body is decaying. So, you know, we, we have to discipline ourselves and what you were saying when before and that's kind of what I was just um I uh, just you know just just kept hearing we have to discipline ourselves to set our minds on those things of the spirit and not on those things of the of the flesh and there was a scripture I had um pulled up I think it was Romans eight and five you may have had it in your word too but I just love that scripture and in the um uh passion translation it says those who are motivated by the flesh only pursue what benefits themselves, but those who live by the impulses of the Holy Spirit are motivated to pursue spiritual reality. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing. It's those impulses. It's those little promptings that the Lord will give you and direct you and move you into that certain place where you are dependent on his spirit. And it's an awesome place to be it is it is the place that we should even desire and again set our affections on set our minds on to be led that way as sons of god right right yeah and that's important because that was the very next thing that i was going to say was that when the soul is in control and governs someone's life death is its yeah. shame yeah 
And so that's the part that Jesus came. I think that's the part that we need to, to just really see that Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil so that we are no longer, we're no longer slaves to sin. There's nothing that we can't overcome, you know, whether it's emotionally, whether psychologically, I mean, what physically, there's nothing that we cannot overcome That's with right. Jesus. But I, I, you know, but I, I want to stress though the, 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 uh, the importance of that soulish realm, because like you were saying with emotions, Mm -hmm. Like mo emotions are real. Of course, we know mm -hmm. they're real, but they change every day. I Sick promise them. you, they change when you change your clothes. <laughs> Which is why we're never supposed to govern our lives based upon our emotions. Right. You know, it was one, it was interesting because when I was in Dallas Christian College, and I remember I was reaching out to one of my counselors about something, and I said, you know, um, I feel like something, something, something. I don't even know what it was I was talking about. He said, well, you, you made an interesting statement. He said, you know, you said feel. Feeling mm -hmm. is an emotion. Have you talked to God about this? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was like, whoa. Yeah. You know, because mm -hmm. a lot of things, it's like I feel and I feel. And yeah. you know, and like, you, like I was saying, mm -hmm. feelings and emotions and those things, they change. Mm -hmm. And we can't be governed by them, especially when they go against okay. the word of God. Absolutely. You know, it's like just because you feel it doesn't make it right. That's right. Yeah. You know, and so that's where you got to make make sure that it's lining up because if I'm feeling hatred and mm -hmm. bitterness, mm -hmm. I know that's not from God. That's right. That's right. And so then I know there's some purging. Yeah. It's got to be done within me. That's good. That's I'm not good. praying for whoever whoever made me mad. I'm praying for Veronica that yeah. I gave them that kind of space. That's right. You know, and so that's how we operate in our sonship mm -hmm. is, is 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 maintaining and understanding who we are mm -hmm. and being representatives of a son. Yeah. You know, and so being wise uh, with how we govern ourselves. You know, one of the things uh, Jesus is, it says in Hebrews 2 and 14 that Jesus has destroyed the power of death over us. That's spiritual death. Like mm -hmm. all of those things, Jesus has already destroyed. Let's just settle that right now. Jesus has already destroyed the power of death. But listen to this. First John 3 and 8. And I want to read this in the amplified amplified version. It just kind of blew me away when I when I when I read it in the amplified. It says, "The one who practices sin, separating himself from God and offends him by acts of disobedience, indifference or rebellion is of the devil." Mm. And takes his inner character and moral values from him, from the devil and not God. For the devil has sinned from the beginning. The son of God appeared for this purpose to destroy the works of the devil. Yeah. And so that thing just hit me like the person who habitually practices sin, sin being separating himself from God and offending him by acts of disobedience, indifference and rebellion is of the devil. I was like, Lord Jesus. <laughs> um, and I'm saying that because I am finding more and more how it's becoming easy to compromise. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Playing around with sin. Absolutely. Compromise, you know, mm -hmm. well, God knows my... Of course he does, right. but that's not a license for right. disobedience. And it never is. Right. And so what happens is like there has been a numbing or a dumbing mm -hmm. down of the word because now you don't even hear people preaching about sin anymore. But I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to preach about it because <laughs> I know it's real. And it's a trap of the enemy to keep us moving in these things, we yeah. give the enemy space yeah. and he just wreaks different types of oppression in our lives yeah. unnecessarily. Right. Like we are sons of God, you know, and we have power over these things. And it's like, you've got to get a hold to your, like the enemy knows 
what will entice you. Mm -hmm. Like when I go fishing, I know what type of bait to put on my line. <laughs> I'm going to put the bait that I know the fish want to eat. Right. And guess what? I'm going to put a nice portion on there too. Cause I mean, I want you, I want you to just really, I want you when I, when you get it, I want you to grab it. Right. Right. Yes. So he, I know the type of bait. I know how to cast that. I know when to cast it at the right time. I know how far to cast it out. And guess what? I know how to wait. And that's how the book of James talks about mm -hmm. how the enemy, how he entices us and that whole process. Mm -hmm. And once I feel you on the line, <laughs> once I done dangle that bait in front of you and you've grabbed it, shoot. Yeah, reels you in. Reel you in, and it's like, and then you can't get out of it, and right. you find yourself wrestling with this thing. And it's like, oh my God, I'm trying to get out. And I mean, and God will deliver you, you know, He will definitely do that. But it's like, but look at what you might have to go through before you get delivered. Right. And so, understanding, and I know what I'm talking about because we all have been there. Am I saying I'm sinless? Absolutely not. Right. <laughs> so, I'm telling you what I know. I'm telling you what I have experienced. And this is why, Erica, sometimes you have people that falling even in the church because mm -hmm. nobody wants to talk about this stuff. We right. want to hide this stuff. Oh, God forgives it. We ain't supposed to judge. Well, let me tell you something. I would rather say, hey, Erica, come on now, girl. I would rather do that in, 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 in and save your soul from hell. They have to be sitting there like, well, I mean, I don't want to judge because, um, no, I care about you and I love you enough. And I pray that somebody loves me enough that when you see me being captured as bait, come on now, yeah. you're going to come and rescue me. That's right. And the only way you can rescue me is with truth. That's right. The Bible says it is the truth that sets us free. That's right. Regardless of whether you want to hear it or not, yes, if you don't, that's fine. You know, you can do with it, but at least every time you see me, I'm, I'm going to have the same stance. It's going to be truth. Yes. It's going to be truth. Yes. It's going to be truth. Yes. But I feel like we have a lot of things and see a lot of things going on because, you know, um, we call it judging, but really it's not. It's just calling out the works of the flesh. Galatians right. chapter 5, read the works of the flesh. You know, to judge somebody is to condemn them, mm -hmm. to condemn them to hell. That's not what we're doing. We say, hey, sis, I love you. you you're going down the wrong path. Come on now. That's I can't right. let you go that way. I can't let That's you go right. down that path. That's right. And so we do that um, because we love one another, because we care one another, because we care. In the book of Jude, he says, some of them you got to snatch out of the fire. Snatch. <laughs> snatch. <laughs> When I see you going there, I got the, I'm going to snatch you out, you know? And so that's our responsibility as sons, you know, to, to, to bear the, you know, to bear the birth, the infirmities of the weak, you know, uh, to bear the, the, the burdens of those, you know, of our brothers and sisters to be there, to help you and love you, but also be able to correct as well, you know, and that's the piece we don't like. That, you know, right. that's that that's that sinful nature that that hasn't, you know, that has risen up right. that, that, you know, doesn't want us uh, or receiving truth, because once you open a door to the enemy, it doesn't want to receive truth. That's right. And that's probably a good indication right. <laughs> that you didn't open up the door mm -hmm. to demonic oppression. And there is a there is a difference between a, a obsession and uh oppression. Yes. Can you be oppressed by the enemy? Open a door and find out. Mm -hmm. And so this is why we see a lot of believers struggling with these things because we, we don't hear these things, you know, um, or they're not being taught in their fullness. But, mm -hmm. you know, God told us don't, 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 don't play with sin. Don't practice in it because there are consequences of it. There are things that it do, it fragments the soul. It mm -hmm. separates us from God. It, it all of these things. It's just so many things that it does that it's not worth it. Mm -hmm. And I get it. If you fall into temptation, 
then we have an advocate with the father. Get up, brush yourself off and keep it moving. <laughs> you know, but don't let the enemy have his way uh, uh, knowing that you have the victory. Yeah. So we've been given the, the command to guard our hearts, yeah. our thought life, to guard our actions and our bodies. Why? So that we can walk rightly before God and be an, be effective. So am I am I saying uh, be legalistic about this? Absolutely, because without the Spirit of God, you can't do it anyway. So that's why Jesus had to die because, you know, in the Old Testament, they're trying to just obey, 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 obey. And their heart hadn't been changed, so they couldn't do it. It was just not in the human DNA to do it. So now that Jesus Christ has died and we have the spirit of the Lord living within us, now we can do that. And so it's, it, it, you know, it has to be a life of repentance, a life of communion, a life of forgiveness, a life of love when you don't feel like it, yeah. when you don't want to. I mean, all of that, yeah. Yeah. because yeah. we can we can find justifiable reasons not to forgive somebody. We can find justifiable reasons to hate somebody. We can find we can we can find reasons if we really oh, want. Oh, yeah. <laughs> But God is saying, but think about it. God could find justifiable reasons against us too and mm -hmm. could turn around, could turn and walk away from us anytime he wanted to, mm -hmm. but he chooses not to. Right. And if he can do that for us, okay. then surely we can do that for everyone else. That's right. That's and so that's what we're being called into a life of love, repentance, re obedience, communion, grace, extending mercy. All of those things God is calling us to. So religious traditions, just going to church only doesn't do that. It has to be a sanctified heart, sanctified mind. You know, uh, you know, just an, an invasion of the Holy Spirit is what allows us to be able to do this. Without God, we can't do it. That's right. That's right. But with Him, we most certainly can. So I'm gonna pause there and let you interject there. Absolutely. One one of the things I I, I was gonna say as you were speaking, it was just um, coming to me. And one, one of the things that I, I know and I try to live by is we can't be ignorant to the enemy's devices. Mm -hmm. And in not being ignorant to his devices, you better study yourself. Mm -hmm. Because like you were saying, he studies you. He mm -hmm. knows you. So he knows what's going to tempt you. He knows what's going to turn you left and take you off of that straight and narrow path that God has you on. So you have to know yourself and have to be true with yourself when those things come up and you know that you need to deal with them. You know, you need to forgive. You know, you need to let some things go. You know, you need to let some people go. You know, you need to turn and have a different set of a, a, a mindset or whatever it is. You know, we cannot be ignorant to the enemy's devices. Know your own shortcomings. You know, the Bible tells us to work out our own salvation with fear and trembling because it's God that, that's in, at work in us both to will and to do for his good pleasure. So he is there for us. He is going to help us through it. But we have to come to that realization and understanding of certain things that we need to lay before him. So we have that dealing with with ourselves, but then also speaking on on the sonship, the position that we have as a son and being able to snatch people out when we see them is is just amazing to me because you are we are we are positionally as a son. And and knowing that the father will engraft you in, he is no respecter of person and he will bring you in just like he brought us in. That's what we need to be having the mindset of when we're dealing with people that God will show you that's dealing with certain things and, and, and our emotions. So we have to be in that place, in that steady place, in that realization of who we are as sons so that we can snatch people out of the fire and do it in love and know it and bringing them alongside so that they too can have what we have. So, you know, these conversations like this are, 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 are key. And, and, and I just believe that, you know, God's going to do this even the more because we have to start 
talking about these things and, and, and getting in the face of our sisters and brothers because the enemy is just wreaking havoc and allowing us to go to a lot of different places and we have to come back and recenter ourselves. And sometimes that's gonna take, you know, us us reeling ourselves back in and, and really hearing and have conversations like this so we can be rooted and grounded in the word, asking questions, conversating, and kind of like, you know, Bible study, which is few and far between in these days. <laughs> I, I just, you know, it's, we, we just have to, we just have to continue to stay, stay, stay focused, stay rooted and grounded in who we are as sons of God. So. Amen. Amen. And one of the key words that you said, um, or that you, you were referring to, you were talking about transparency, um, talking about knowing yourself. And so, you know, one of the things is, um, I mean, you have to know yourself in so many different ways, right? You got to know what upsets you. Um, cause you know, because whatever that is, that's the button the enemy is going to push. Oh, he's going to push. It. <laughs> you know, because whether it's you. husband and wife, like he knows the very thing that irritates and aggravates you. Yes. So guess what he's going? He's going to push that button. It's going to be the very thing. And so then how are you going to handle that? Right. Are you going to just fly off the handle and, you know, emotionally? And then it's like, then you end up saying something you shouldn't say. It's like, okay, okay, Lord, forgive me. I didn't mean to, you know, or you're going to say, you know what? Um, it's really not that big of a deal. You know what? The world is really not going to come to an end. <laughs> you know, it's, it, it's understanding, you know, ourselves and not giving the enemy space. One of the words the Lord gave me a long time ago, and I use it often in light of eternity. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Doesn't really matter, right? Absolutely, in light of your own sanity and in light of well being. Absolutely, it really worth taking yourself over the edge. Absolutely, in light of eternity. So I had to. I had to really come because I can kind of be um, anal about, about certain things. You know, and so I had to really get myself to the point. Where I'm like, okay, Veronica, it's just like chill. Like it's like it's okay. And yeah. so, like, it's funny because in our house, like Kirby and Mariah are the, oh, it's okay. Don't worry about it. It's gonna be. And so Zion and I like, huh? Oh, you believe they get that? Oh my god, you know. <laughs> so, but you need the balance of both. You do. And so because sometimes I'm like, no, it's not okay. <laughs> um, and so what we all had to learn was to balance it out to where don't say it's okay to get out of it because you don't want to be accountable to it. Mm -hmm. Right. But then it's okay, but Veronica, don't go over the edge. Don't hit them over the head with a, with a, with a, with a sledgehammer. You know, can we extend some mercy and grace, please? <laughs> so those are the things that we have to, and that's very key because that's being re a responsible son is understanding who you are, understand how you think, how you operate. That's, that's a part of owning who you are, knowing who you are and not allowing people yeah. and circumstances to take you out of that because everything that we're going through now We've all had to kind of say, now, wait a minute. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. I can't let this conversation take me out of who I am. Right. You know, I can't get through for you. You have had to do that. <laughs> uh, yeah. We've all. And so that's being responsible, mm -hmm. with, you know, with who you are in God's kingdom, with your sonship role mm -hmm. and not allowing the situation to dictate your response. See, that's a mature person. Right. And one of the things that I have written in the book of page 93, it says mature sons are given weightier responsibilities in an effort to continue to train them as sons and eventual inheritors. I'll say that again. Mature sons are given weightier responsibilities in an effort to continue to train them as, uh, as sons and eventual inheritors. So to whom much is given, much is required, right? 
That means that as we continue to mature and grow in various areas of our lives, then the Lord gives us weightier responsibilities. That means sometimes that even the spiritual battle is even heavier. Mm -hmm. Erica, I know you can attest to when we first got saved, you know, everything was great. You know, the little warfare was like, you know, we pray. I'm like, boom, yes, we're feeling great. God is good. And, you know, we're all this. Oh, and it was like, you know, a couple of years after this thing, the battle got a little, got a little, you know, it was like the punches, you oh, know, yeah. a little harder. Oh, yeah. um, the, you know, the rounds went a little longer. Yes. Uh, and so you're like, wait a minute, God. Now no, I didn't no. know it like this. What happened? <laughs> right. And so you're like, okay, did I do something wrong, Jesus? Oh, Lord, we're repenting and we're yes, yes, we fast yes. and we're doing all the stuff because we're thinking this. But it's really God okay. growing us up, training us in righteousness right. in order to be eventual inheritors. Okay. Because if I'm going to give you my inheritance, then I got to make sure you can handle it on all levels. Mm -hmm. all, all. You know, it, it's, it's interesting, you know, because the, the Bible talks about you know, if you're not faithful in the little things, yeah. you're not going to be faithful in much. Mm -hmm. So if you're not faithful with a little bit of money, let me tell you this. For some reason, people think we can mismanage a little and like something is going to come over them. And all of a sudden, when they get much, they're just going to be these immaculate stewards. Right. Doesn't mm -hmm. work like that. No. If you can't handle little, you're not going to be able to handle it because the same mindset that you had with the little, you are going to have that with the much. And so that's what this training up in righteousness does for us. It trains us with the little stuff and then he expands it and he gives us a little bit more. How faithful are you? And so it's even in the little things, you can apply the same principles. It might take a little longer. It might take, you got to be a little bit more fervent in prayer, mm -hmm. but the principles work, That's right. you know? And so that's what God is calling us into so that when we become eventual uh, eternal inheritors, you know, we are ready to take that position. And so the, so, um, we, you know, so if you're just joining us, we've been talking about this whole, making sure that we're not living in the soulish realm uh, we're living in the realm of the spirit. We talked about body. Then you have soul. Then you have that spirit man that makes us God conscious. That's where uh, when we're praying, when we're having worship, when we're communing, that, that spirit realm is that communication with God. Yeah. And so that's the part that has to be um, uh, developed, mm -hmm. right? We talked about developing the ear developing the eyes, the spiritual part of us. My concern is that we have spent so much time in the soulish realm that spiritually our spiritual um, senses are not sensitized. And so I was talking to, I don't know if Lynn is still on that. I was talking to Lynn today and I was saying in order to recognize the counterfeit you have to have experience the real, right? You won't know the counterfeit if you haven't heard the. So if you have never heard the voice of God, how are you going to know the difference between his voice and Satan's voice? How are you going to be able to work that out? Because even Eve, did God say he was able to get her to contemplate in her mind what God had said. So good. And that's what the enemy will do for us. Well, yeah, God said that, but you know, he really meant this. Mm -hmm. And if you haven't spent time in that word and spent time sensitizing yourself to hear and discern the voice of the Holy Spirit, then sometimes we make wrong decisions. That's right. And sometimes they cost us, you know, it costs us time, it costs us, you know, just various things. So the spirit will begin to transform our hearts and will begin to re to renew our minds. So the connections of the spirit and the soul will be formed once the redeemed mind of our soul. So it's like this once once the spirit man is now in control. Now, you know, it starts to transform the soul. You don't. You don't think 
like you used to think. You don't speak like you, you know, you don't have hatred in your heart. Like that's that transformation that begins to happen when things are in proper alignment, when spirit man is in control, you know, because we can all say that I'm telling you, you know, with my BC days, you know, I don't know if I have any old classmates on there. I mean, we partied, we, we, I know y'all don't believe it. We partied, we drank, we cursed, we did all of that. I did all of that, <laughs> you know, and, but there's something about a transformed heart, a transformed mind, a transformed soul. You don't even desire to do those things. Once you have been in the presence of God, it's like, oh, I can't say that. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, I can't do that. Mm -hmm. You know, it's something that nobody even has to tell you. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things I, I remember back in the day, you know, we, we were brought up in traditional church, right? Mm -hmm. So it was like, you know, people come in dressed a certain way, you know, your, 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 your skirt too short, which I do believe, I let, you know, we should be dressed modestly. I do that. I do know that. But one of the things I do know is that it has to come from a transformed heart, right? Because when I got to the place where I was saved for real, I wasn't going to come in there any old kind of way. Like I, not the God of the universe. No, I can't wear that. No, no, I can't do that. No, you know, so there's that transformation that happens mm -hmm. that even transforms how you used to think. Mm -hmm. What you used to say, you don't say, you don't even want to say it, mm -hmm. you know. So that's where sometimes you have to let the work of regeneration happen in people. Because if I'm telling you how to fix yourself externally, but you haven't done anything internally, I'm wasting my time. Jesus said, it's not the washing of your hands that makes you holy or pure. It's the what the rending of your heart. That's, right. That's those spiritual things. And so when this Bible speaks about living in the spirit, it refers to elevating. Okay, so I'm going to jump now. I'm going to go to my, my, my frequency talk. Uh -huh. So... When the Bible talks about living in the spirit, it refers to elevating our soul to the frequencies of light, life, joy, justice, and peace. Let me tell you something. When you're in the presence of God, you can't tell me that you don't feel joy, right. peace, right. light. Right. I mean, you. I mean, it's just like when we leave our nights of worship, like we could just. You can fly home. You don't even need to get in the car. <laughs> because we have elevated. What happens is everything is energy, right? Mm -hmm. So as we're singing the songs of the Lord, we're increasing our vibrational frequency. Mm -hmm. So now it, it, it now connects with the frequency of heaven. And so now what heaven has we begin to experience it in a very physical, right. not just not just spirit, but we can we can feel it. We can like we we start getting warm, or sometimes we get tingles. Sometimes you know we you know we start seeing angels. We start seeing all those things because we have elevated our mm -hmm. our, our thinking. Our mind is on Jesus. Set you know fix your eyes on Jesus. Mm -hmm. So everything is Jesus. It's about joy. It's about love. It's about peace. It's about forgiveness. It's about all of those things. And so now what happens happens is we have connected with heaven. So uh, I was thinking about today. Um, you know how people break glass with singing? What they'll do. Okay, so say I have this, this cup here. So what they do is they take a fork and they ting the glass. So if it says ting, so then what they do is he hears the note in his, in his head mm -hmm. and he matches the frequency of the note. Mm -hmm. And so he begins then to sing the note at the same frequency mm -hmm. as the glass. Mm -hmm. Wow. To the point where it shatters the glass. 
right? So when we, right, praise, worship, prayer, all of those things raise the vibrational frequency to the point to the point where we can begin to hear. I'm like, we start hearing in the spirit. That's how that's where the prophetic comes forth. The, the you know, the prophetic starts to come forth. You got people prophesying, you got people doing this, you got people because now we're in it, we're in the frequency of heaven, and we can hear and see like never before. Mm -hmm. That, my brothers and sisters, is the inheritance Amen. of the sons of God. Amen. That's what we're supposed to be doing. Amen. That's how, but let me tell you what the enemy will do. He will come up with counterfeit ways to hear and see in the spirit, right? <laughs> so that's where a lot of this new age Focus on the universe. Yeah. Become one with the earth. Yeah. Um, meditate. Um, you got to reach enlightenment. Right. Right. But all of this stuff is done without Jesus. That's right. That's right. So then you open yourself up to the second heaven, which is where the demonic resides. Mm -hmm. That's why it's so important. That's why Jesus is so important. That's right. And that's why the enemy, he hates what we have, <laughs> which is a direct connection to God, the Father, to God. Thank right. You. And so he comes up with counterfeit ways to get what we can get freely. Mm -hmm. Right. So they got to conjure up all this kind of stuff. They yeah. praying to the dead. They yeah. calling up all kinds of stuff, you know, to get answers and doing all that stuff. But God never told us to do any of that. I said, yeah. let me tell y'all, let me tell y'all this. If you're praying to your ancestors and all that stuff, that's called necromancy. And it yeah. is an abomination and it is forbidden. Yes. Like, you, you know, you got to know what the Bible says is permissible mm -hmm. and what is not. Mm -hmm. And my concern is because we're seeing it, Erica, you and I can attest that because people don't want to do things the right way, they're tapping into all this other stuff. Mm -hmm. And you're opening doors that I promise you, you're not ready for. Mm -mm. And so, but, and so, but that's the beauty is that we don't even have to conjure up anything. That's right. You know what I'm saying? Just let me tell you, when you just begin to open up your heart, God, I just bless you. God, I just love you. God, you're the best thing that's ever happened in my life. Lord, I thank you that you just didn't leave me where I was. Let me tell you, the ascension starts happening then. Right. That's right. I mean, you start feeling the presence. You start feeling your spirit man elevate. That's the inheritance that we have, that we don't have to conjure up anything. God is like, I will meet you in the midst of your praise. Mm -hmm. I will meet you in the midst of your worship. Mm -hmm. I will meet you in the midst of communion. God does that. That's right. He comes, he says, I will dwell. You know, he, he wants to dwell in the midst of us. It's nothing that we got to, you know, almost kind of like, you know, Elijah had to confront the 300 prophets of Baal and the 350 prophets, prophets of Ashtoreth, 650 false prophets mm -hmm. against the one true and living God. Come on. Come on. <laughs> I mean, they're cutting themselves and uh, they're beating their chest and they're doing all this stuff trying to conjure up their God. Elijah did one thing. He just right. he called upon the name of his That's Lord. Right. What? Come on. Come, Come on now. Come on. We don't have to do that stuff. Come As inheritors and sons, we ought to, we have access yes. to God. Yes. And he allows us to, to see and, and, and discern and, and, and all of these things, yes. you know, so that we can come out of the, the soulish realm, mm -hmm. right? So that we're not, because anything in that soulish realm is not going to benefit us. That's right. It's not going to benefit us at all. So I'm going to take a pause and let you.
let you comment. Well, I, look, you need to keep teaching. I, I'm like, I'm, I'm just agreeing and receiving. And it's like, yes, and 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 just, I believe somebody needed to hear that. What you were just really saying, um, be, because that's so true. And and what you said that's key is that we have access to the Father. Yes, we have to live in that reality. And I and I just, I I, I can't say that enough. I can't. Um, dwell on that enough. That is a reality. The spirit realm is more real than this right here that we have in this flesh. And we have to become conscious of that. And just knowing that, you know, we have access to bring heaven. Yeah, absolutely. We have access when we are listening. And as we went from the beginning, attuning our ears and our eyes to what the Lord is saying, then he will show us great and mighty things. He will allow us to be his sons and to establish his kingdom here. Amen. So, I mean, everything you were just saying was just was so good. But but just that that access and knowing and understanding, because this is about the identity. This is about your identity in Christ. This is you and us being fortified in, in who, who we are. So, I mean, I, I don't want to interrupt your teaching, Veronica, right. because it's just so good. But, but that is something that I think we just have to really come to a, a conscious awareness of is that this is the reality and to elevate our faith to that place. Right. Because everything that we have done has started in faith. Don't lose it. Right. Right. And, and so, so often that's, that's what we do as people of God, but we are, that's, and Christians, that's okay. I like that. But what we are are believers. What are we believing? What are we standing on? What, what are we understanding? Because when we look into this mirror, we can't go and turn our face and immediately forget what we look like. Right. So, like I said, I don't. I don't want to. To. Um, no, that's good. No, that's I, I don't. Good. I don't. You know, the teachings. I mean, I, our hearts. My 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 prayer right now is just that our hearts are open to be able to receive and understanding and knowing that be, through Jesus. And through the power of the Holy Spirit, the hope of glory that he has imparted in us, there is absolutely nothing that we cannot have that's already established in heaven. That inheritance belongs to us and it is up to us to pursue it. It is up to us to tap into it. And it is up to us as sons to establish it here in the earth. And that's one of the things and why we have a lot of a lot of chaos and confusion is because this very thing right here, not understanding our purpose, not understanding who we are and then what, what our purpose is. Because as sons, we establish what our father wants to be established. His kingdom right. should be here in the earth. So just keep teaching, Veronica. I'm like, <laughs> I, at, at one point, I'm like, I'm here, but I don't need to be here because this is how you can do this no, on your no. own. And it's just, it's just, it's just awesome. It's just awesome. So yeah. No, and those are great points because you brought up one of my most favorite scriptures, Jeremiah 33 and 3. So just write that down if you're listening to us, Jeremiah 33 and 3 that says, Call unto me, and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not, which you don't even know. I'm telling you, that's a powerful scripture. God is saying, call unto me. Yes. He says, and I will answer. He says, I promise you, I will answer you. And not only will I answer you, but I'll show you great and mighty things that you don't even know of. Right. Let me, oh my gosh. Right. And let me tell you, this journey with the Lord has been just that. Like that. that's, that's my scripture because <laughs> I'm like, God just said I could call you. <laughs> and, and, and I remind him of his word in, in, in your prayer time. Remind God of his word. God just said, ask and I would receive. You said, seek and I would find. And then you release your faith and say, so I thank you that I received. 
Yes. You know, yes. that's what he wants us in mm -hmm. sonship, understanding the inheritance. As a parent, my children are not worth worried about, you know, they're not worried about anything. They know that I'm going to take care of them financially. I'm going to take care of them. Education. I'm going to take care of this. Why? Because before I even brought them into the world, I had already, you know, set aside that I was going to do that for them. They didn't have to ask me any of that. <laughs> and so that's what God is saying to us. Call us. And you also mentioned about being fortified. Mm -hmm. Like you got to know who you are. Like, this is not the time anymore to be pondering and playing around with identity. Yeah. Like, we got to get so beyond that um, and know who we are and know whose we are, excuse me, and start fighting the battle, taking territory for the kingdom of God. So before you go there, I'm sorry. I, it, I'm, I'm like, I just, just have to be obedient because I just believe that there is somebody on the line okay. right now with somebody who's tuning in right now <clears throat> that <clears throat> people have been coming to you and you don't know what to do. You don't know what to say. It's some heavy things that are that that they are um, coming to you, and you it's, it's it's weighty for you. But God says that He will show you those things if you just surrender. If you just submit your thoughts. If you just submit your heart. If you just submit, even in that place, right where you are. And I, and, and, I, and I just sense that some people have come and more people are going to come to you. And God said, I will show you great and mighty things to give them direction, to give them instruction, to give them strategies. Because you as a son of knowing who you are as a son has submitted yourself to him and will be able to encourage and strengthen somebody in this walk that we're in because it's needed in this time. It is needed in this time. So I just believe that there is somebody there. Grab hold to that word that God will show you in the midst of the conversation that you're having, that somebody is is coming across your path or somebody is calling you on the phone or somebody is seeing you in the grocery store, that God will show you great and mighty things that you have not known, but that he will reveal to you to encourage your brother or sister. Amen. Amen. And, you know, and, and, and like we were saying, that's a part of your inheritance because, you know, what we should be doing is edifying one another. We should be, you know, laying hands on the, in the, on the sick and watching them recover. That that's your sonship. Right. Absolutely. You know, and, that, and those are the works that should be following us. You know, that's how people will know. Jesus said, if you don't believe me for the works that I do, for the words that I say, believe me for the very works that I do. <laughs> Come on now. He yes, said, don't right. just believe what I say. There's demonstration. There was demonstration to show who he was and yes. demonstrate who he was. Yes. And so we're believing that that word is for somebody who is watching. It can be for everybody. Let me tell you something about the prophetic. When a prophetic word goes out there. If you if you want it, you can. God, I receive that word right now in Jesus' name. And so that's the beauty. Like I said, we're walking in sonship because we know who we are. And when the word of the Lord is released, it's for everybody. It can be for somebody specific. But if you have the faith to believe it, you can receive it too. Come yes, on now. Yes, <laughs> I mean, I've been in places where the word of the Lord was released and I was in need of the very same thing. Yes. I was like, God, I thank you. I thank you. You know, you. I know you're doing it for them and I receive it for myself That's too right. in Jesus' name. And let me tell you, God responded That's to right. my faith. No respect. And so just understand that the word of God is eternal. It is not blocked in time. It is, you know, it's for anyone who has mm -hmm. the faith to receive yes. his Word. Mm -hmm. The word is alive. It's mm -hmm. sharper than any oh, two-edged oh. sword. And it's for anybody. Yes. Grab a hold to it. So yes. I thank 
the Lord for the word tonight. I thank mm -hmm. the Lord for uh, for whom that is for, because mm -hmm. God wants us to walk in that place where we're just hearing. And I told you, I'm driving down the road, and even as I'm driving down the road, sometimes I'm just ministering to the Lord. I'm like, mm -hmm. God, you're so good. God, I mm -hmm. thank you, Lord, that you know I get in my car and drive down the road, and I don't have to worry, you know, da 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 da. But God, I just pray for people who don't have this. Let me tell you, when you start interceding for other That's people, right. I'm That's in, right. Right. Amen. He will invade your That's right. And he begins, he will begin to put people on your heart to yeah. pray for people in your it's like, huh? So yeah. he'll, he'll he'll drop a name in your spirit. Let me right. call her and see what's going on with her. And then when I call, they're like, girl, oh my God, I'm girl, it must have been the Lord who told you to call. See, mm -hmm. this is this is the inheritance, the inheritance. Of, the of God that mm -hmm. we're supposed to be walking in, that we're so divinely connected to God that we're hearing and seeing and yeah. sensing. And discerning all the time. It's not just for when you're in church. It's not just for okay. Well, it's only in my prayer time at, at six o'clock in the morning. No, this is this interaction that you have with the Son of God all day, every day. There are times I'm driving down the road. God will begin to speak, and I'm like, okay, Lord, hold on, hold on. Let me get a pen. You know, and I'm or let me grab my recorder, and I'm trying to record what I'm hearing. He downloads songs like. The, you know, he doesn't wait until, okay, well, um, I'm going to wait till nine o'clock. She's going to be sitting on her bed and she's going to be, um, you know, she's going to have dinner already, put, you know, already done. And the kid's going to be, no, God just doesn't operate like that. <laughs> and so we've got to be so in tune yes. to him yes. so that we don't miss right. what he's saying and what he's doing. Because even there are times where he'll tell you, don't go that way. Turn and go this way because there's something he wants to do, something he wants you to avoid, or he's training you to hear him and to, to and to obey him mm -hmm. because that's what sonship. Remember, I said it's all about training you up in righteousness mm -hmm. so that you can learn and grow in the things of the kingdom. So when I talked about the, the higher frequency, elevating your, your frequency, mm -hmm. you know, all of that to, to, to hear God and see God. Well, in, uh, when the soul remains in low frequencies, it becomes exhausted. It becomes uh, afflicted. It becomes desperate. It becomes fearful because it is being taken over by a river of frequencies that come from the flesh and death. Mm -hmm. So just like there are powerful spiritual things that happen in the higher frequencies, you've got those lower things that happen yes. or you've got those detrimental things that happen in the lower frequencies. And you can tell when low frequency stuff is happening because you start getting, an you start getting anxious. You know, it's like, okay, you start getting mad, you start getting bitter. That's why I said, watch, you know, the, 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 the the worst is the eyes are the window to the soul. You got to be careful what you're watching. When you're watching the news and you start getting anxious and all that stuff, you shut that stuff down because it's, you know, because when you're operating at lower frequencies, studies have shown that you cause dis-ease, mm -hmm. a low frequency causes dis, D-I-S slash E-A-S-E, which is disease, it causes disease to the human body. And so when we're dealing with heavenly frequencies, we experience things like life, love, peace, health, abundance, courage, vision. We produce the fruit of the spirit, knowledge, revelation, understanding. The realms of God's glory. Do we not under? Do we not experience those things? In yes, and so, but just like in the kingdom of God, in the kingdom of darkness, when you're operating at lower frequencies, you experience death or spiritual death, right. fear, sickness, lack, anxiety, darkness, affliction, um, ignorance, ignorance. You can't think. You're confused. Confusion is not of God. So the, and, and it causes the works of the flesh, spiritual blindness, um, lack of understanding, and even curses. All of those things happen at the lower frequencies. Let me tell you what I feel like happened that I think people are now getting their momentum mm -hmm. is when all of this pandemic, because even the word pandemic to me is a negative word. Like there's nothing positive 
that comes to mind when I think of the word pandemic. So when you talk about pandemic, when you talk about isolation, when you talk about quarantine, when you talk about all of those, all of those things are negative things. That what what, what happened was it sent people into a, a, a place of panic and fear and anxiety and depression and all of this stuff, you know, and it causes us, it causes our bodies to reduce our vibrational frequencies. And so then at that point, our physical bodies, like your mind is attacked. You start getting all these thoughts. Your heart is attacked. Your body is attacked. You know, I can't sleep at night. Like I got all this stuff running, running in my mind and all of this stuff. That's when you know you are operating in a lower frequency. And so that's when you got to, that's when you've got to learn how to do a second Corinthians 10. Casting down imagination mm -hmm. every high thing mm -hmm. that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. So I hear what you're saying, but I'm not letting you take me to a place of fear. I'm not living out of that place. I'm not living out of anxiety. I'm not living in depression. So God, so what you then begin to do is God help me. What do I need to do to make sure I keep my sanity? What do I need to make sure to make, make sure my house is still, you know, so whether it's you know, get out and do some things, sit down and talk mm -hmm. together, watch a movie together. God will give you all kinds of creative ideas mm -hmm. to make sure you stay here because it's the enemy's plight, That's right? Me. To keep us in confusion, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to keep us in pain. Oh my God. What does the Bible say about fear? Fear has torment. I've already given my testimony about there is a literal spirit of fear. Mm -hmm. That when you open that door, torment is an understatement. And so that's why we have to be careful not to allow fear to grip us, mm -hmm. right? Because if you walking around in the house and you, oh my God, did I hear some, oh my, you know, or it's like, oh, I'm, 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 I'm afraid somebody's going to call me and tell me, you know, because what you think as a man thinketh in his heart, mm -hmm. so is he. You, you can even cause those things to happen. Mm -hmm. Job said the thing that I feared the most, right? So guarding the mind, I told you that whole soulish realm, like bringing that thing under subjection, like, wait a minute now, I choose, I choose to infiltrate my mind with God's word. Even if I feel fearful, what I'm going to do is I'm going to find Timothy, well, right. oh, I'm just going to quote it because I know it. God didn't give me the spirit of fear. That's right. I mean, if you got to say it a hundred times, walk around your house. God did not give me the spirit of fear and I'm not walking in fear. God did not give me the spirit. God, I thank you that you did not give me the spirit of fear and I am not going to walk in fear. You keep saying it to your soulish man understands that you are not going to walk in fear. And so when the spirit is reigning, so when your spirit man is reigning over your soul, then our spiritual life grows. Yeah. Right. So have you seen where, well, you know, you you see some really powerful spiritual people. But let me tell you, they have spent time disciplining themselves, uh -huh. staying in that word, putting the putting the guard over their mouths. Mm -hmm. You understand? you know, uh, uh, confessing and, and communing with God. I mean, there's a lifestyle that comes with that. It is not anything to just have more night, That's right. you know? And so the more life of Jesus we have, the more light will be manifested. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say that again. The more life of Jesus, mm -hmm. the more of the life of Jesus that we have, the more light will be manifested. People will see it. They will discern it. They'll, they, they'll know before you even get there, there's something different about her. Like, I don't know what it is, but I know she got to walk with the Lord, you know? And as sons, that again is our inheritance. Mm -hmm. So light is the frequency of heaven and it has the highest frequency of vibration in the universe. Mm -hmm. Light is the frequency of heaven 
and has the highest frequency of vibration in the entire universe, which, which is why light dispels darkness. That's right. God is every think about think about when you read in the Bible all of the passages when they saw God in his glory. It was just the, the light of his glory was so bright they couldn't even look at it with their natural eyes. God said, you can't even look at me with your natural eyes and live because of the brightness of his glory. And so the more of Jesus that we, that we have, the more light we resonate and manifest. So Proverbs 4, 4, 4 and 18 says, but the path of the just is like the shining sun that shines ever brighter until the perfect day. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna read that again, Proverbs 4 and 18. But the path of the just mm -hmm. is like the shining sun that shines ever brighter until the perfect day. Mm -hmm. and, and, and some of these things that I, I do wanna give credit to, um, uh, the, the book, uh, Anna Mendez Farrell, uh, The Spirit of Man. Like she talks a lot about that, about just the difference between the soul, the body, the spirit, and just how all of that ties into. And, and, and so it's really understanding a healthy mind produces a healthy body, a healthy spirit, a healthy soul. And so I just want to make sure, you know, that we are emanating um, with light yeah. and we can't do that when we're compromising. Jesus, one of the seven churches in the days to come, one of the seven churches was a was the compromising church. And if we're not careful, I'm seeing conversations, even on Facebook. Well, I mean, if people want to do and I mean, if you want to live and I, I told you about that whole snatch me out of the fight. Don't 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 tell me if I want to live. No. If, if I am a believer, hold me accountable to the word. It might hurt. I might be kicking and screaming. I might not like it. I don't care. That's what I need. You understand? That? Like when I discipline my kids, <laughs> are they going to like it? They're not going to like it. Do they want to hear my speech that I have to give them before I discipline? They don't want to hear my speech. <laughs> Because they don't, you know, you understand? So like, come on, let's be realistic about this thing, you know? But if you really love and care for someone, you're going to be like, hey, I'm, I don't care. I don't like it, but it's okay. Because I love you. That's and, right. you know, you perfectly so one day, you know, I, I keep telling my kids and I'm like, you know, I know you're kicking and screaming now, but you know, when, when later down the road, I'm telling you, you're going to be so grateful. You're just going to thank God. <laughs> um, and so, you know, that's what we have to stay true to. It's like, I love you enough that when I see you falling, right, I'm going to say, hey, you're falling, you know, but I'm also going to be there with you. Now, I'm not going to do, we talked about doing things in a loving way, in a godly way, because when Jesus dealt with the woman, you know, with all the husbands, I mean, he, he, he dealt with the issue. But he did it in such a loving way that it was like she was glad not to have to do. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not going to do that anymore. I just had an encounter with Jesus. I just had an encounter with truth. And so that's the way God will give us strategies mm -hmm. on how to minister to people, on what to say, how to say. Because I think that's our problem, especially with women. And mm -hmm. I was going to say people with my type of personality. Um, sometimes it's how I say it. Yes. <laughs> um, so, you know, the word says, let your speech be seasoned with salt, you know, and so let it be with grace, seasoned with salt. And so I've had to pray for that. You know, I'm, I'm not honorary. I'm mm -hmm. not prideful to say what well, I mean. They know what I meant. I mean, how prideful would that be? I'm like, OK, Lord. Um, and, and, and the Lord, let me tell you, with Mariah. That was the Lord showing me because I couldn't discipline her the same way I disciplined Zion. Like that, you better come in here and sit down and you better, you know, I couldn't do that with her. 
Because that would crush her little spirit. Oh my gosh. And then you talk about somebody feeling terrible. <laughs> I was like, and so I was like, okay, God, help me. You know, because like I need to discipline her because I can't, I can't not do it because that's not going to work out for you in the long run. That's right. But it needs to be to the point where it's ed- it's edifying, that it's teaching, and it's in- it's also in a lovable way, you know. But it's not so lovable that you don't get the fact that you're in trouble. I've seen I've seen parents overly do that. I mean, I know you did it. It's okay. No, it's not gonna benefit. So I had to learn how to, to how to make everything a teachable moment with her. So you understand why I'm taking your phone, right? Okay, well, repeat that back to me, mm-hmm. you know. Um, and so that way, even, even with her giving it up, she wasn't in rebellion because she understood why, right? She understood the consequences of her action. So it was like, oh, okay, I got it. I got it. I messed up. I got it. So those are the things that God will allow us. He will give us the strategies on how to talk, how to minister, how to do all of those things, you know, right where people are, but it has effect and impact. So um, the body reflects the condition of the spirit, right? So I I tell my mom all the time that when a person gets sick, the word of the Lord said, it's the spirit of a man that will sustain him in sickness. So if I can keep my spirit man in part, you know, if I can keep my spirit man communing and praying and in faith, my my body has to line up. Has to line up. Because spirit man has rule and reign. But the minute I move from the spirit realm to spirit man, from spirit man to soulish realm, the minute I move into the soulish realm, I'm in trouble. Mm -hmm. Because then in the soulish realm, remember mind, will, and emotions. You know, my, 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 you know, it's like my mind is not lining up with my heart. So now faith is not being released. And then it's like my body is, you know, it's like it, it's manifesting different things. So let me tell you, if the word says it, you can believe it. It's the spirit of man that sustains him in sickness. That is the word of the Lord. And so that's where God, he wants us moving and operating so that as sons of God, that we can walk in a place of victory. Mm-hmm. We were created for victory. Like some of this stuff we're going through, we don't even really have to go through. I don't think God really planned for us to go through all this stuff. <laughs> you know, but understanding that sometimes we subject ourselves sometimes unknowingly mm-hmm. and unnecessarily. Mm-hmm. You know, I can control you know, uh, arguments. I can control all of that by just not in, engaging, you know, for my own sanity sake. Like, no, nope, not going to do that. Not going to get myself out of, Mm-mm, can't do that because it's not worth it. And so in the days ahead, and I wanted to deal with the soul of man because tonight, because I really feel like the Lord is saying it's a lot of, Paul called them carnal Christians. Mm. It's not that you're not saved, but you're living in the carnal nature. We're governed by our our, our feelings. Like, you know, I mean, I, I, I'm going to put it out there. I'm going to say it. I'm all for protesting, but rioting and tearing up stuff. No, ma'am, because you're not even going to come in here and riot and tear up anything of mine. Mm-hmm. And it's and and to, and and. So because we've got to be careful because this behavior will continue to manifest and continue on. And that's just not the way that God, you know, God, God never told us to, um, to retaliate. He never told us to do. He says, vengeance is mine. God repays. 
And let me tell you, when God repays, God repays. It's better than anything we could ever, ever, ever do. But we open up ourselves to stuff when we do that. that that's what I'm trying to get at. Because when you start doing that, you open your heart up to anger and rage and you open yourself up to the demonic. Point, pure and simple. And so now you got to fight to get them demons out. <laughs> because once they take up, you know, once they start oppressing, it's not easy to get rid of them. You know, and it, it I mean, it takes a concerted effort. And so why even put ourselves in those places that we're opening ourselves up just because we let our emotions right. in a brief moment take control. Right. And so when I'm feeling emotional like that, I'm like, let me go somewhere and sit down. Let me go get steel. Let me put on some worship music and sit before Jesus. Because mm -hmm. I know if I move and say something right now, it's not going to be good. Mm -hmm. I know if I operate like this right now, I'm not going to do the right thing. And so when you feel, you know, emotions are out of line with the word of God. We as sons, you have every ounce of control, every ounce of control. One thing that the enemy cannot override is your will. That's why we have it. That's right. And it's only when you yield it to the enemy that he even has access. But he doesn't, he's, he's not, um, it's not anything, it, it's something that you have to give. Like you can't just, you know, um, Think that you have it. Right. It's got to be something that I voluntarily, willingly hand mm -hmm. over. And a lot of people are doing that. Jesus said, what profits a man to gain the world and lose his soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? I'm telling you, we see all this stuff, you know, Hollywood, you know, you've got artists, you've got uh, actors, actresses, and all, you hear all this stuff about people selling their souls. Is that true? Absolutely. Or Jesus would have never said it. What will a man give in exchange for his soul? So it happens. And so guarding our mind, mm -hmm. guarding our will, yes. and guarding our emotions is what keeps us walking in the spirit. Mm -hmm. At the beginning of the book, it says in <clears throat> Romans 8, 14, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these, the ones who are led by the Holy Spirit, are the sons of God. So is everybody a son? No. He says, those who are led by the Spirit, these are the sons of God. Of God. And so that's the place. And I know sometimes this stuff can be like, whoo, Lord Jesus, this is a <laughs> it is a tight rope. You know, we used to say all the time, it's tight, but it's right. But right. It's, you know, I think about you know, I tell people all the time these things are in place to protect us. Yes. Not that God wants us just to live this um, you know, this restricted life. Like that is never, like, let me tell you, life in Jesus is the most wonderful thing ever. Freeing. That's right. You know, it, these, these, his word is to protect us mm -hmm. and to keep us from following after God's <laughs> little G, you know, all of these things that we see people doing. And I want to talk a little bit in the days to come about, these spiritual things that are happening around us that we're we're fighting little battles but we're losing the war like these little things have much bigger agendas but you won't see it and sense it if you're just focusing on the little things and so we've got to be able to do that, remember, call unto me and I, I, you know, and I will answer thee. So when we call unto God, God will let us see the big picture of what's going on and happening around us. So 
I'm going to close with that for myself. I'm going to let you um, give some closing remarks. Um, I think I think we can probably close out with sonship. <laughs> I think it's just such an important um, such an important topic. You know, I just don't want people to miss it. Because, you know, we got to this place where everything was about be yourself, be you, be, duh, you know, all that stuff. That's soulish stuff. Mm -hmm. It's the soulish realm. Mm -hmm. You know, but when we understand that we are sons of God, we operate as sons of God. How do you know, how is that? How does that look in our daily lives? It ain't got nothing to do with us. That's right. It has everything to do with Jesus Christ, <laughs> you know. Um, and so when we understand that, then the people of God become our priority, not ourselves. Because the one thing, if I've never learned anything else, I've learned that when I put God first, God, family and his people, God takes care of me. Mm. You know, I don't have to I don't have to fight you know, for things that, that people are fighting about because God, he just does it. <laughs> I can't explain it. He just does it. That's that Matthew 6 and 33. Yeah. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then what does he say? Oh. And all of the things will be added. Yeah. So that's that's what it is. Thank you, Holy Spirit. That's what it is. When you seek God and his kingdom, the things of his kingdom, he makes sure that you have everything. You, I could tell you testimony after testimony after testimony, things happen. And I was like, like beyond a shadow of a doubt, I know it was God. He's proven himself. He has a track record with me. And so this is the type of living as sons of God. That spiritual set your mind on things above Colossians. Yeah, that's it. And not on the things of the earth. What I tell you, earth is flesh realm. It makes us world conscious. That's where we stay. That's lower level living. I don't know about you, but I want some Zoe living. Oh, God kind of life living. <laughs> And so that's what God is calling us into. Amen. So I'm going to let you give some closing remarks. We're going to have prayer and we'll sign off for tonight. Amen. Amen. You, you have done the teaching. Uh, and so I, I, I don't, there's not a whole lot for me to add. It's, it's just reiterating everything um, that you said. So I just not even doing that, encourage everybody just to go back and, and listen and, and receive so that we can live and dwell in the reality of the son, the sons of God. And the, the, I, I think for me, just the, the big key is as we're following Jesus, which is what he did, he did nothing unless he saw the father mm -hmm. do it. He said nothing unless he saw the father saying it. And that's the place that we have to be in, so led by his spirit, so in tune with what is going on in the spirit realm and what the spirit in the third heaven is saying, the Holy Spirit that dwells on the inside of you, who is your guarantee mm -hmm. that you are a son of God, listening to him and being obedient and not moving in any way if you don't hear. Amen. But knowing that when you do, that you have a responsibility as a son to obey your father. Because it is his will, just like Jesus's will, was the will to do the business, his father's business. So that should be our heart in all of this is to do the business of our father and establishing his kingdom in the earth. So thank you, Veronica. Um, I, I, I just enjoy all the teachings that you do. And thank you for just allowing me to sit and be a part. <laughs> Gonna set right on line. It, it was good. It was good. These, these, these are and needed again for this time. I know it was there before, and, and and I said that I heard your passion. I heard your passion and your plea to the people of God of coming out of that soulish realm and living and dwelling in that place 
of the spirit um, where we all have access to. So I just give God glory. I, I, I praise him for this teaching and, and I, I thank him for allowing us to be rooted and grounded in who we are in him, just levels upon levels and maturing even though more as sons of God. So I give him praise and I thank you. Amen. Amen. And so one of the things that Erica kind of didn't know that she and Cassandra always try to get out of these sessions, but there's a training up that they don't realize that I'm, 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 taking them through as well, because, um, you know, these are platforms and places that God is calling us into. And even as we are, you know, I, I told her, I'll take, I'll take the lead on tonight. I kind of changed it up a little bit. I said, but what I want That's you to hear, I have no idea what's going on. Right. I said, but I want you to hear me. I want you to listen as you're being quickened. I want you to write it down. And so that's training up in righteousness. That's that training. So in order for people to be able to do that, you have to give them opportunities to do it. Right. And so um, I, I know I could have taught this by myself. I know I could have. They keep telling me that all the time, but I'm like, but that's not my purpose. I have a purpose for, for bringing you in. And so because you're because each person um, is relatable to various people mm -hmm. and I can explain things, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a teacher, so I'm into details and I'm, you know, but then somebody else can say the same thing, say it differently and someone else gets it quicker. And so that's the beauty of of our individuality is that you know we can say things and communicate things and you know um it, it, and everybody can get what they need and so that you know so that's great but i know uh let's see lance said for her to learn how to operate more in the spirit realm and increase uh, her frequency so i would first say um lance as far as operating in the spirit you know just you know um in your prayer time, as you're, uh, as you are preparing to spend that time with the Lord, start out with some worship music. It doesn't even have, it doesn't even have to have words, right? Uh, put on like Dappy Keys. Uh, he has mm -hmm. instrumental keyboard worship. It's beautiful. Like there are no words. So, because what you want to do, remember I said that soul, the mind, will, and emotions. So you want to bring that under subjection to your spirit, man. And that's how you do it. You know, you get yourself into, but sometimes I'll find just one scripture and I'll just read it and I'll just kind of think on it and ponder on it. Or I may have a series of scriptures that I read, but I have the, so I'm setting the tone. I'm setting the expectation. And so I'm giving God space. Space, mm -hmm. Right. I'm letting him know that I'm intentional about that. So um, even taking communion, um, you know, sometimes just prayer, you know, you just, you know, just just begin to go into a prayer of thanksgiving. Right. Just, you know, God, you know, just just write down people's name or write down even before you go. Like some people are spontaneous prayers. And that's because we've been through this for a long time. Like we can pray for hours. <laughs> We can pray for hours, uh, but if you're not to that point, then what you do the night before, say, okay, you know what? I just want to, you know, I want to go before the Lord tomorrow morning and, and Thanksgiving. So I'm going to write down things to be thankful for. So you just begin to write down everything that you're thankful for and everybody you're thankful for and da, da, da. And so when you, so when you start your prayer, you, you got your music and, um, you begin to, you know, God, I just thank you, Lord, for, for this and, you know, just and then just be spontaneous with it. Don't make it ritualistic. Speak your heart to the Lord. I think that's that's what he wants. You know, God, I just you know, sometimes I'm like, God, I just love you. Like, I just can't even explain the depth of my love. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like that's what he wants. Authenticity. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you that that right there will begin to to bring your bring you spiritually to the forefront that you become more and more in tune and so um then you'll begin to 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 then listen just sit there sometimes too and then after you've done that just stop and listen right just see what's coming to your mind what's coming to your heart and write it down Write it down, write down what you think you're hearing. And that's what I talked when we were talking about that practice. 
Um, and so increasing frequency has everything to do with, like I said, the playing of the worship music, the reading of the word, keeping yourself in a place of joy, um, thanksgiving, like all of those things that take you what I call to your happy place. Yes. Yep. Positive thoughts, yeah. word thoughts, you know, all of those things. Um, so Anna says, no matter what is thrown at me, I want to, to stay about my father's business. Amen. Um, so I'm going to pray for, for you really quick, but I just wanted to kind of, like I said, the teacher in me, I want to, I want to give you practical ways to do that. Um, so that, you know, you don't think we just sound in yeah. spiritual. <laughs> and and can, can I just say to, to Mary real quick on her question, uh -huh. it's about operating more in the spirit. Um, Listen for the little promptings. Listen, listen for those little things, even while you're out and you you have your mind focused on the Lord, walking in the store or wherever you're going, and just you know, just just loving on the Lord. Listen for those promptings that um come up because you know I, I'm sure we we talked about just having our senses exercised by reason of use. So um, and and having the faith. That when there's something, even just to pray, you don't may, maybe not necessarily say something to someone or whatever. But when God gives you and, and shows you a particular person that that you're you're near to to be intentional about listening to that and praying or whatever he gives you and instructs you to do. So um, I think for me, it's just those 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 little acts of obedience. Mm -hmm. um, while even you're out, because, you know, I think Veronica talked a lot about 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 um, in our prayer time of of being in the spirit. But we're to always be in the spirit and always, you know, even when we're out and just practicing with that, because, you know, otherwise we'll get pulled into everything that is going on around us. And we don't necessarily want to do that. So I, I just think, um, encourage you to just listen for those little small promptings as well. Right. And when she says promptings, um, they could be um, just things that automatically come to your mind. Mm -hmm. That you know you didn't think about. That you know you weren't thinking about it. Like when I was talking about even how I wrote the book when I was in prayer, the Lord said, I heard, you are a king and priest in my kingdom. Walk as such in the earth. I know that was not even anything that could have even remotely come from me. <laughs> and so... Um, those are the things, but yeah, that's it. After you pray, you have to sit because there's no, there's no dialogue <laughs> if it's not a two way conversation. You know, if we're praying, 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 and then we just get up and leave, that's not a conversation. That's a monologue. Um, so that's why I said, remember you come with the, with an expectancy <laughs> that God is going to speak. So you sit and you wait for him to speak. And sometimes, you know, it might take a little bit because if you're training, if you're getting yourself used to sensing his voice and, you know, it, it talks about, you know, in Elijah, he's it's a still small inner voice. It's not anything that you're going to hear like the children speaking. That's your outward. But it's an inner voice that you hear. Or sometimes it is um, the word. Sometimes it's like some words are almost almost lift up off the page. It's like there's this big emphasis on on a word in the bible that's god that's the holy spirit speaking too so that's what you know um she means and vanessa vanessa said wonderful teaching thank you ladies would like to order the book and so you can get that on amazon.com um and you know they, they're you know they they ship really quickly so if you don't have the book um uh you can purchase it at uh, amazon.com Quick reminder on Saturday, I'm starting to do Sabbath uh, worship word and prayer sessions. It's only going to be um, an hour. We're going to do a couple of worship songs. We're going to do some word and then we're going to end with prayer. But there's something that I think powerful is going to happen when we gather on the Sabbath. In Hebrew, it's called Shabbat. Okay. You know, I, I and I'm not trying to be legalistic. I'm not trying to be legalistic at all, but I just have come to believe that when God says something, it's a reason he says it. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Like Saturday is the Sabbath. 
Sunday is the first day of the week. And so, uh, and I'm not making any arguments about it. I'm just saying that's what I'm going to do. So if, you know, it's going to be from eight to nine o'clock. Uh, if you want, you can go to my website and um, Erica, can you type the website in there um, and, and sign up because I really want to do it. Um, I'm, it won't be Zoom, but it'll be kind of like Zoom because I want your interaction. I want us to be able to talk and dialogue and um, and, 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 and really talk, <laughs> you know, uh, this is good, but I can't dialogue with you unless we're typing because it's hard for me to type, read my notes and then look at the comments and all of that. But when we're doing like Zoom, we can see each other. We can dialogue. We can do worship. You can hear us singing all of those things. So that's what I really want to do on Saturday morning. Excuse me. So if you want to be a part of the Sabbath word, worship and prayer, just go to the website and on the on the home page, it says register and I'll send you the link for it. But I, I may do a Facebook live. I'm not sure. But, you know, Facebook is starting to censor a whole lot of stuff. And so I'm trying to become a little bit more independent. Um, and so uh, and because, like I said, I want interaction. Uh, I want to kind of do it um, like a Zoom. So there's the um, the website there. So let us close out with prayer. <clears throat> Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for tonight. We thank you, Lord, for this session that has just been so uh, empowering. It's been enlightening, Father. It's been edifying, Father. We thank you, Lord, that iron does sharpen iron. We thank you, Lord, for everyone that has been listening, Lord, that it has caused their spirit man to just leap. Father, we thank you, Lord, for teaching us, Holy Spirit, how, you know, uh, to live according to the spirit and not according uh, to the flesh, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that your word just confirms over and over again that we are sons of God and heirs according to the promise. And so, Father, we thank you for that. We thank you for the Zoe life that Jesus said, I've come that you might have Zoe and that you might have it more abundantly. So we thank you for the God kind of life that your word says. And so, Father, forgive us, Father, you know, for allowing ourselves, Lord, sometimes to be ruled and governed by our emotions. Father, forgive us for, for things that we said that we shouldn't have said and for harboring unforgiveness in our hearts. Father, we thank you, Lord, that we have an advocate with, with you who is Jesus Christ. We thank you that his blood was poured out upon the mercy seat for us. We thank you, Lord, that you said that if we can confess our faults that you are faithful and just to forgive us of our faults and cleanse us from all unrighteousness, Lord. So we thank you, Lord, for the blood of Jesus that was poured out for us. For us. We thank you, Lord, for the victory that we have, that Jesus has overcome the works of the enemy. And because he has overcome, we too are overcomers. The word of the Lord says, nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. So God, I thank you that we are more than conquerors. Lord, we just ask, Father, for prayer for Lynn, Father, who's just asking, Lord, Lord, to you know, to be able to hear you spiritually, to be able to um to 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 just walk spiritually with you, Holy Spirit, to hear you, to see you, to sense you and discern you. And so, Holy Spirit, we're just asking, Father, that you will meet her, uh, Father, in the point of her hunger and thirst for righteousness, Lord, that you will speak to her, Father. I declare right now that her spiritual ears are opened and she will begin to hear your voice like never before, God. We thank you, Lord, for what you are going to do through her because she has such a hunger and a desire for you, God. And you told us if we hunger and thirst that you would fill us. So I thank you for the, 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 the feeling. I thank you for the refilling. I thank you, Lord, that even in your words says, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living waters. I pray for the living waters to flow up and out of her in the name of Jesus. And so, Father, I even thank you for Anna. We just pray, Father, that she says that no matter what is thrown at her, she wants to stay about your business. And Father, that's the prayer request for all of us to always be about our father's business. And so, Father, we thank you, Lord. We ask that you will help us to put our hands to the plow, that we will not turn back. We will not look back. God, that we, we will stand for righteousness. We will stand for holiness. We're not going to live according to the sinful nature. God, we, put, we, we mortify the deeds of the flesh. 
flesh. And so, God, we thank you, Lord, for showing us, Holy Spirit, how to do that on a day by day basis. And so, Father, we thank you for everyone that's here, that's, that, that's watched in, that's tuned in. For those who are going to listen, Father, we pray that you will continue to bless them, God, that you will continue to show them who they are to you, that they will walk in their kingdom identity like never before, that they're not going to be threatened of being a son of God. God, but there's a power that's going to come with their acknowledgement. There's a power that's going to come with this, this consciousness of who they are. And so, Father, we thank you, Lord, that when they pray, God, that they're going to see the results of their praise, their prayers. When they lay hands, the sick will recover, God. We thank you, Lord, that when they speak words of encouragement, God, your peace will be released in Jesus' name. So, Father, we thank you, Lord, for this teaching. We bless your name. We seal it right now we declare that every word that has been spoken tonight will fall on good ground and it is going to bear much fruit i declare it in jesus name why because this is the inheritance of the servants of the lord and their and our righteousness is of him and so god we thank you for that and we give you praise in jesus name amen so thank you so much for joining us Join us again next week where we're going to talk about being kings and priests. Let me tell you, it gets gooder and gooder and gooder. All right. So be sure to sign up for Saturday morning Sabbath worship word and prayer by going to my website, www.veronicaevansministries.org. I look to see you Saturday morning. Be sure to join us on next Thursday. Share the broadcast. We love you with the love of the Lord, and we'll see you next time.